Hello guys and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to share with you some of the goodies that I was lucky enough to acquire within the past few days. Initially I planned to make it as a live recording, but it was just one of those days when I couldn't find the right words and nothing really worked. So I decided to make a voiceover and I hope it is okay. And I would like to start with this uh, Magnani watercolor paper. I've spotted it at the local art shop and I got very curious because I've never seen it or heard about it before. It is a 100% cotton uh, 300 GSM cold pressed watercolor paper. When I asked at the shop what their experience was with this paper, I was actually told that they believe that this paper was of a little bit higher quality than uh, Fabriano paper, which made me very curious. Because, as you know, I love Fabriano paper in sheets. But I'm not a very big fan of Fabriano paper blocks. Here you can see me taking out some small sheets of other watercolor paper. And to the right you can see the Archer's Rough paper. And to the left you can see the Hennemulu Expression watercolor paper. Magnani paper was a little bit similar to the Hennemulu paper, but you could still definitely feel the difference. And now I'm taking out my sketchbook, which is my latest DIY project. And if you're curious about how I made it, then you can follow the link in the description description down below. And the paper that I've used for the sketchbook was uh, this Fabriano Artistico 100% cotton paper from their watercolor paper block. Fabriano paper seemed to be a little bit rougher, but other than that I cannot say much because I haven't tried the Magnani paper yet. The next item I have purchased online and it is a bullet or a dotted journal for watercolor. It has 50 sheets and uh, the weight of the paper is 200 GSM, which I was very excited about. I really wanted a soft cover bullet journal, which at the same time would have a paper that is thick enough to handle watercolors. Even though I'm planning to keep my journal very minimalistic, I would like to be able to add some pop of color here and there with my watercolors. At the moment when I'm recording this voiceover, I have already tried it out and I can tell you that I love it. It's just great, the paper is wonderful, the journal lies flat and what I like a lot is that the grid is actually quite big because I have a rather big handwriting. So when the grid is too small then it is a bit difficult for me to write but this grid is just perfect for me and I'm so very in love with it. The next item I got my hands on is this Winsor Newton Cotman Watercolor Sketchers Pocket Box. I was very excited to try it out and I did go out with it to paint on the open air, in the forest and what can I say, I'm not impressed so far. The colors are quite nice and bright, but I do not think that this Skechers pocket box is actually for painting outside of your home or of your studio. First of all, you would definitely need to take your own brush, as this brush is way way too small and I think it's suitable only for very very small details, but for landscape painters like me, for example, I can't really use it for anything when I'm doing my sketches when I'm out. Second, I heard that many, for example, would buy the set even because of the packaging, but I cannot understand, to be honest, why people like it. I found it very uncomfortable because the lid was uh, trying to flip over all the time as I was holding it in my hands. I find my usual watercolor tin from Meaden much more comfortable for these goals. It has a ring uh, where I can put in my finger so that it's comfortable to hold and uh, it's comfortable to mix on the mixing area. Usually in the top I would put a paper towel and I will mix at the bottom and it doesn't go down so the paint doesn't get anywhere and it just works great. So I would rather suggest to get something like that. And then purchase some uh, Winsor & Newton watercolors in tubes separately and make a custom palette. And now speaking about watercolors. The next thing I bought were my beloved White Knight watercolor paints. Recently they have started selling them in tubes, which I'm very very happy about because then I can decide how much paint I want to have, whether it is half pen or whether it is a full pen, or if I need uh, lots of color for some uh, big paintings. And the colors I've purchased are Sap Green, Carmine, Indian Thren Blue, Quinacridon Rose and Cadmium Orange. These are some of my most favorite watercolors. And Carmine, even though it is not that light fast, I just find it beautiful. I would also like to say that I think that Sap Green from White Knights is the most 
beautiful sap green you can find, in my opinion at least. Maybe I'll make a separate video comparing it with other brands like Schmincke and Windsor & Newton, but the one from White Nights is just brightest. It truly really has the color of fresh spring grass and I find it just amazing. The next item I would like to share with you are Windsor & Newton Artisan water mixable oil colors. I actually got them as a present and I'm so excited to try it out. I've never tried oils before and I would really like to start. So when I learned that there is actually a possibility to get water mixable oils so you can just use water when you're painting with them, I got very very excited. This set has 10 colors inside and all of the colors are just great. It has both warm and cold of each color and what I really like is that they put this uh, little brochure inside of the packaging which has very nice information about oils and painting mediums and what they give and what they do and how to thin the paint and so on and so on. So I found the information in this leaflet uh, very helpful. So I think this was a very very great idea and I cannot wait to start using them. The next thing I've got is this soap for washing brushes after using oils and acrylics. I'm actually having quite of a problem that even if I wash my brushes with soap after I'm using acrylics, sometimes there's still a little bit of a residue and then next time I'm taking the brush into my hands I can feel that it is a little bit stiff. So I really hope that this soap will help me keep my brushes clean. And the next thing that I got are these tiny tiny canvases. Aren't they adorable? I think they're so cute. To be honest, my plan is to practice with oils and then to make some very cute tiny landscapes probably or maybe something else and then just to put uh, this canvases either on my bedside table or my office table because they're just so adorable. The last but not the least is this gouache set from Royal Talents. It has five colors, they are in tubes and the volume is 20 milliliters. I really wanted to get some gouache in tubes because right now I have this Hemi gouache that I have acquired approximately a year ago and I'm actually quite happy about them. They have many colors, the colors are gorgeous and it's nice to work with them. However, a year after when they started drying out a little bit, it became a bit difficult for me to reactivate them. And it's not that the process of reactivation is tough, it is not. But just, you know, this whole thing of scrubbing and waiting till I have enough of pigment on my brush is a little bit frustrating, so I really wanted to switch to tubes. However, I didn't want to purchase a big set of gouache and tubes because I do not use gouache that often and I do not know yet how much I am into painting with gouache. So I have researched what were the options and that seemed to be as a perfect basic set of gouache it has three primary colors plus white and black and I think it would be perfect for me in the beginning. And if it goes well and I like the texture of the gouache and tube, then I'll consider purchasing extra colors or maybe a bigger set. This is all for today. I really hope you have enjoyed this small art supplies haul. And if you liked this video, please subscribe and see you in my next video. Bye!